Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, we have our last speaker, uh, Dmitry Kumenyuk. He is uh, ten. He is ten years uh, um, develop, uh, production uh, manager. Yeah. Yes. And uh, and uh, yeah. Okay. And let me present you. And uh, he will uh, uh, tell you about the test automation. Aut and automation. And <laughs> Sorry. Test automation and how machine learning can help you with that. Yeah, hello guys. Um, looks like there are many of you who are interested in this topic. Just please sit down. Uh, I really have a lot of to say and show. And maybe, can we turn off the light for a second? Nope. I'd like to have this picture, how many guys are here. Thanks. Okay, um, why are you, well, you're taking places. I have some merch for you. Uh, for those guys who will prepare good questions, I have the t-shirts. You can have some of them and as well, uh, pretty nice stickers. Yeah, that's the thing which uh, guys are usually take from all the countries, so you have something to take. Great. Um, Let's start. My name is uh, Dmitry Guminyuk. I'm working in the uh, Minsk office of IPAM systems. And uh, for now, I'm working almost for 10 years with IPAM. And currently, I'm leading the development of different uh, initiatives at the uh, Test Competency Center. And today, uh, I will show you and present you something which are we working on with our solution named the Report Portal. By the way, uh, does anyone know what is the report portal or have heard about it? It's pretty dark out there, but I still see some hands. Anyway, guys, uh, this is the open source tool which we developed uh, originally in EPAM and uh, make it open sourced. So it's free to use uh, software which can everyone download and use for the test automation. Since there is no so many hands, I will show you a little presentation of it later. But now the thing which we developed inside the report portal. And this is one of our functionalities which allows you to c categorize your fails and basically it uh, does your work uh, during your daily test automation routine. So it analyzes your reports. And uh, the thing which I will show you today, it's, it can be used separately even from the report portal itself. So you just can open up our GitHub pages, find the related uh, repositories, download and use it for your own and try our experience as well. But at the same time, do not try <laughs> waste your time, just use it with the report portal and you will get even more benefits from it. Well, machine learning. Machine learning is pretty easy. It uh, starts from this, then come this, um, a little bit of that part, this one, and that. Uh, so basically that is it. That's machine learning. And um, the main problem may be just to get how this part goes to this part, and uh, you know, now, now it's the time to leave if you really don't want to, s to, to go deeper. Really, guys. So don't be, don't, and no any regrets after it. Uh, well, just kidding in this case. And I will try to explain everything pretty easy with uh, lovely cats and rabbits to, to give you an understanding how actually machine learning works. Machine learning work actually pretty easy itself. And uh, what it does by itself, the machine learning, it's a part of artificial intelligence. And this is the part of processes where machine or computer can learn. And how it learn? It takes the existing decisions, it uh, takes uh, existing ways how things are resolved, and the prediction, or let's say the result, conclusion based on it. And what the machine learning does, it does just compare all the list of existing decisions or uh, ways how the things resolved, looking for similar in your case, and say, okay, if it's the similar, then it's your decision, or this, this is your prediction. Basically, that is a machine learning. The problem about machine learning that somebody and most of the guys expect even more from machine learning. So like, uh, there is like, different pre-sales and process where guys saying, okay, we'll implement something, uh, we know how to do it, this part, but 
everything will be done by mach machine learning. And this is a problem. There are too many expectations from machine learning itself. So what we do and how we use it uh, inside the report portal. We use it for the smart analysis. And this is the part where, uh, which I call like IE in testing, which starts from machine learning. Since you, if you're developing machine learning, you can easily say, okay, guys, I'm developing artificial intelligence. Th and that's true. And uh, the algorithm we are, which are working on, it's the key NN, uh, key na nearest neighbor, and the gradient boosting trees. Test one is much easier to train, much, much quicker to train, uh, and you can get results even quicker. For the gradient boosting, it even harder, much more uh, data you need to train, and so on and so forth. So like our first um, uh, version will be based on key and algorithm, and um, we also will try to get ev even deeper with gradient boosting. So what we will do with this machine learning, why we need and how we'll use it. Basically, we will categorize the fails. So like, uh, the guys, who is uh, of you are from test automation here? Raise your hands. Okay, so uh, your daily routine is like make code and then check the results in, re in reports. And in case if you have really distributed environment, a lot of scaled, uh, big scaled environment, you have a lot of reports and you have to review it. And what report portal can do and machine learning can does in this case, it will review your results and categorize what are the reasons of your fails based on the history of your previous results. So just to explain, uh, this is the regular view, uh, how the report will look like in different uh, most common tools of in wrapper tools you will have those green red and uh, gray items which like gr uh, red here is failed but why why are they actually failing because of the product bugs you have 25 percent of the product bugs in your product or maybe because test automation instability or system issue problems so it's much easier to review this state if you have the different categories so like those fails categorized according to the reason of the fail does it belong to the product bug or does it belong to the system issue and, or environment issues and so on. And uh, the main thing we need for the learning, we need a training set. Every machine learning needs a trainer and needs uh, training data. Where can we get it? Uh, in YPAM systems, we use our production instance, our production cluster of the report portal for more than uh, four years and uh, about 200 of projects in it. And we have really kind of big data in test automation. We have all these logs, screenshots, test cases, uh, and we have the categorized uh, different categories of the fails made by the humans and engineers at this part. So this is the excellent, the greatest, the, the perfect thing which can be used for the training. And uh, usually how we, how we will analyze those. Don't try to read it. I will show you it in, in Zoom view later. But uh, usually we, uh, and what source we can use to analyze the data. We can take this stack trace. For example, if you have a fail, uh, you have a stack trace where you can find why, wh what was happening inside your test automation. And this is the source where you can find the reasons. And the problem about that, uh, that if you will start to compare with other fail, uh, you will just take another one and read through it, uh, and okay, that, that's equal to the 95%. Okay, that's done. Maybe it's a good, good way to go, and uh, we can decide that, okay, if 95% is okay, then it's a similar issue. But there is a simple and little problem about that. And this starts here, like the main value of your stack trace usually starts here in, at, at the first line and where you actually describe what was happening with your test automation. So not some, something was not equal to something in this case. Then comes the regular bubbling issues, like where this uh, assertion appears. Then important part, where in, in which class this uh, issue appeared, and then comes the tail of this. So this stack trace or every stack trace contain this bubbling error which goes from, from the point of your exception to the public static mo uh, mo void main for the Java. And this tail is useless for the machine learning. The problem is that in most cases, in your stack traces, this red tail can be those 95%. And this is 
bring us to the situation when the machine learning will use only this tail, which is uh, uh, not unique, but mm, duplicates in every stack trace. So the first part for the machine learning is read of this stack trace, red stack trace. And uh, this is the thing we are working at, uh, like a first step. Then come next. So uh, what if we will clean it up, remove it, and uh, what will be the next step? We will have this part of the log which contains the uh, issue of the fail and the um, way it happens. So what, what we need to do with that next? And the problem for the machine learning, because uh, machine learning does not understand what is written in this text. Machine learning understands only the text it, it sees. And it sees just a sep separate words from it. And uh, the problem is that every single word can influence on the result. So as much, for example, uh, one letter repeats in this particular text, the much this sing single letter influence of the, on the result of the machine learning. And the problems about that, for example, in each and every stack trace, you will have the timestamp, which will show you when this uh, problem appears, when this lock appears. And with e every single array execution, you will have the different time. We, re we really need to remove it, not to influence on the result. We can replace it with the time. And then comes the process which uh, named like uh, removing the informational noise. Remove all useless and uh, the data which will not help you or even the data will, which will reduce the quality of your analysis. So um, I call it like dry the text or remove informational noise. So what we should do here? <laughs> uh, we need to remove all the uh, braces semicolons, dots, and everything else. We also should to remove all the capitalized letters. I will uh, like turn back backwards, forwards, so you can see it. We can uh, should remove all the capital letters, because uh, in case you have like apple starting from big letter and the apple starting from lowercase, for the machine learning, it will be two separate words. We need to read off this. And uh, then we need to remove all the uh, numbers, all the article, articles like a, the, but, or, and, and so on. They sh should also be re removed. And as soon as the text cleaned, and uh, all this information cleaned, we need to start to analyze it, to work it with it. And what we will get from this, at this point, we will, uh, from each, every single execution, we will get the repeated words for, di for different type of stack traces for different type of uh, fails, and we will collect them. The next part, we need a place where we can store this uh, dry text, and the place where we can quickly search for this text and find those uh, terms, words, and text in, in some specific tool. And uh, for this, uh, God bless the open source, we have uh, tools which are all already available, and this is called like Elastic Engine, Elastic Search, and these things give us ability. Like it has, it's already open source. We can freely use it for our solution as well as a part of our solution. It provides the ability for the full um, text search. So, like main common usage for it, if you have like um, site and you can find any information on it using the, those full text search. Uh, it gives you almost real-time response, and this it's scalable, so it's pretty useful for the report portal clusters. I see that time is running out, I need to speed up. Well, uh, after all the execution, we will collect the, all these words for, for specific fails. And we will collect kind of the uh, metric, which called the frequency of particular word. And having all these metrics, we need somehow to represent each text uh, with this metrics. And here comes the TF-IDF index. Now really, we will go deeper. <laughs> Hold on. Um, so the TF-IDF index, this is the uh, frequency characteristics which represent your text in uh, metric, matrices, metrics, metrics, okay. <laughs> uh, so what stands for TF and IDF? TF is, is the term frequency. So basically that means how many times this particular word repeats in your document. Just to give you an, an example. 
So here's the fairy tale about the rabbit. Like small rabbit in a forest, and uh, what do you have? Like about six times it will be repeated in this text. And this text is about 100 words. So the TF uh, index will be like um, 0 0.06. And uh, now we need to know how many and how often this uh, word also repeated in all other books in our library. For example, we will have like 10 million books in our library and 1000 of the books will have the word rabbit. And we will take inverse document frequency. So like we will define how many times this word repeated in other documents. And as a result, this uh, index will show us how, how important this particular word among all documents, among all, all stack traces we have in this particular one. And how this item, how this term will influence on the result. For example, how it belongs to the production instance or for a production bug or automation issue. And uh, back to the fairy tale, this word can give you the, this, this index can give you the understanding that this, is book, this book is about the fairy tale about the rabbit in the forest because in the same text you also has like forest, wolves, once upon a time, all this stuff, and this is the fairy tale. And at the same time, if you have something like buses, no tickets, um, chasing uh, whatever else, this is still be the guy who do not pay the, uh, the how you call it, you know, like tickets in, in a bus. Hopefully it's also rabbit in your language. Uh, well, so the same for the machine learning and inside the report portal. When you have the understanding which word um, influence on which result, you can understand where this uh, vector belongs to. So basically all these indexes can be represented as, as a multi-dimensional vector in multi-dimensional space. So just to give you understanding, for example, if you will have just two words which influence on the result, and this will be exception and expected. So two-dimensional uh, space. And we know that, uh, for example, we have a product bug, and uh, it's marked like product bug, and we see that uh, word expected influence more on this item than anything else. And for the automation issue, we have the word expected, which really influence on the automation issues. Uh, oil, I mean not expected, exception. Then we have the system issue and, for example, item which not instigated yet. Uh, and now comes the new one, and we need to analyze. So how the machine learning will do this? It will create, uh, but by the way, what is your opinion where this item will belong to? In which category? Red, blue, yellow? Who is for the red? Raise your hands. No, yellow. Blue. Gray. Gray. <laughs> nice, nice, nice tray. So how the machine learning will define it? It will build the decision boundaries. So that basically means everything which belongs to the upper side of this decision boundary belongs to the product part. Uh, everything down below is a system issue. And it will build all those decision boundaries among all the uh, defect types it, it has. How those items, just to give you understand what, what those dots means, it is the position of the vector. Since this ATF index, it's like size of the uh, vector in particular uh, dimension. And for every dimension, so as many words you have in your text, for example, for text with 100 words, you have 100 dimensions. And for every dimension, you have the TF index, which means how many it stays in this uh, dimension. And this is like positions of each vector. And uh, for easily understanding, machine learning builds the area among those vectors uh, and when it compares the new item, it compares the vector which built on the vectorized text. And basically, in this case, it sees that the closest cosinus distance for this item is uh, stay in the area of the system issue. So it will be turned as blue one, so system issue. But now you may ask me the question, why it just like few millimeters from the, uh, move it two millimeters on the right, it, it will be in the other area. And how the machine learning will define it, okay, why, why it's so different right now? And the answer is pretty simple, because you never have stack trace consisting of two words. Usually you'll have one more or many more others. And there is, 
it can appear one more dimension in this side and maybe somewhere in this space it will move, this vector can move in different direction and be closer for one of these items. Because this is just example in two-dimensional space. Well, uh, how we done it, how we did it, uh, how we implemented it from the coding perspective. Um, there is a report portal API uh, and we added the Elastic Engine, which really helps us to collect those dried text and vectorize this text. So basically convert the, your stack trace into the vector, which can be understood by the machine learning. And we created the service analyzer between them, so like my, uh, little microservice, report portal built on microservices, and which collaborates with, uh, via the, uh, from a API to the Elastic Engine and back. And we made it in Go. Uh, does anyone know who, what is the Go language means? Okay, any benefits of the Go language? Who can name it? Fast and uh, mm, low memory consumption, because Java takes a lot, really. Just uh, in other presentation, I'm saying that uh, Java micro microservice doing nothing, just outputting hello world, will take about 300 megabytes of RAM uh, in a couple of minutes. And the same Go language uh, microservice will use just like 10 kilobytes for that. So that's why we love Go language uh, microservices. Well, uh, the index structure. So how we will convert your data into the vector. And uh, there is a special um, instruments or tools inside Elastic how we ca can do it. So for the, uh, in order to save your fail, we'll mark it, we'll add, uh, yeah, it's not a good way to show data with the this thing, but okay, then um, we have, we'll save the launch name where this execution belongs to, where this fail belongs to. We'll say in the issue type, so like test case name. Uh, we'll save the uh, log level, so is it a stack trace, uh, is it just a warning or debug and so on. And the main part, uh, which is in a bold on the screen, the analyzer. So we put this main message of your fail, uh, we will put it inside the analyzer. And next comes the work of the analyzer. Analyzer autonomy consists of three parts. The um, tokenizer, the character filter, and token filters. What does the uh, character filter? When th the stream of your data comes, comes, comes into the analyzer, it can, filter, it can filter specific symbols. So with this filter, we can remove the semicolons, the dots, the braces, the anything, and even replace the uh, camel cases uh, letters with the lower case. Then comes the, um, sorry, comes the tokenizer. This is the thing which actually uh, divide your text into the separate terms. So like uh, if you have the five words, it will separate it into the array of the five words. And there are different types of tokenizers which we use just like spaces to separate, which use the uh, special orthographic basement, uh, tokens and so on and so forth. So uh, there, are, there are a lot of different types to divide your text into the terms. And the token filter, it's the part which helps to uh, remove such words as and, or, e, r, uh, and the next. So uh, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm in a rush to try to deliver everything. Uh, so next comes the bool query. So as soon as all the data is saved, uh, we need to get data back and ask uh, Elastic to give us something closer to our uh, requested item. So basically, when the new file comes to the into inside the report portal, and we are asking, okay, uh, please analyze this item, compare it with the old library of files we have. We use the, the, this bool query. And the bool, bool query contains on, on three main uh, requests, which will be combi combined as a final result. It contains of must not, uh, must, and should. So the part about must not, we add the wildcard to exclude all the issues which are in to investigate state. So we exclude everything which is not analyzed yet, rid of it. Uh, we should boost the priority for the items which are with the same lunch name. So basically, if you have the test cases failing in, a, in the same lunch, with the same parents, with the same name, uh, probably it it look more mm, should be the same test case, 
uh, then in this case we need to uh, boost up priority for this particular file. And we, we do it with this uh, request. And then comes the past of the must. So basically it must have the failed blocks, it must ex uh, have the issue type, so basically it means that it, sh it should be analyzed already by somebody. And uh, the main part is MLT request. It named like more like this. And here you can see the 90%. So this is like the cosinus uh, distance, difference of the cosinus distance among the vectors. Basically that means that we are looking for the items which are not far away from the, this particular vector in cosinus distance more than 10%. So give us the closest one in the area of the 10% of your distance of this vector. Do you guys get it? <laughs> Hopefully. Yeah, that's what is hard for me as well. Uh, we spend a lot of time for all this ma mathematics stack, uh, stack cuz really uh, machine learning is just about the mathematics. So this is the qu uh, when you, your child will ask you why I need to know the L I why I need to learn the algebra just say me you need to know about machine learning uh, when you will be an IT guy. Uh, so MLT question. So we ask Please return us the closest in the close area uh, with difference more, no more than 10% all the vectors which are equal uh, to this item. And uh, we get back those items and since we prioritize some of them according to the, if it's the same name, if it's the same lunch, we just take the most closest one to this particular field and this actually how the key and then algorithm works. It find most uh, closest one in the area uh, of the speci specific field. Whew. Did anyone get anything? No. <laughs> okay. What challenges we met? Um, the problem is that if nobody checked the results of the machine learning, it degrades. So uh, here comes the second uh, problem that if any error appears in analysis and if this error will be used in the next iteration by the machine learning, the uh, area of this error will grow with each new iteration. So here comes the result, like uh, every machine learning needs to have the trainer. And uh, the problem is also like we need sometimes to flush our training to, in order to uh, return and give back the most accurate results. So how we, uh, this is a challenge we are working on right now and uh, how we trying to fix it. We add in specific flag which will mean that this item was analyzed by human, not by the machine learning. And if this, uh, this item will have the uh, human decision, then we need to boost up the priority for this decision. So in comparison, for example, if the machine learning will find in same area like two items which analyzed by machine and analyzed by human, the human one will be the with more priority and will be used like a, a decision or for that. And this is, I hope, hope this will help us. And we actually have the assigned uh, data, be, um, data scientist who helps us at the project and uh, hopefully will bring it even at a new level in the next uh, half of the year. So that is it. Um, once again, everything is, is open sourced, available on a GitHub. The GPL license means like free to study, copy, share, analyze, do whatever you want. Uh, it's free, really. And uh, there is no any billable functions, just download it and use it. So this is the link on GitHub. Do not hesitate to give us a few stars if you don't mind. Yeah, and uh, now maybe just I have uh, 10 minutes, exactly what I need. Uh, if you'd like, I can show you uh, shortly what is the report portal. Would you like to? Yeah. Great. Uh, mother of father. <laughs> Here it is. Uh, here's the, our landing page. It represents all the uh, key features we have for report portal. And now I'm on the login page. Uh, we have the Twitter feeds here just to represent that we uh, release new version, there are a new integration, so on and so forth. So now I'm logging into the application. Uh, it also can be integrated with GitHub or your um, 
company authorization server and main spaces you will have like spaces for the project launches filters and uh, since you just uh, installed the report portal it will have no any data inside of it and uh, we have the demo generate demo data function will just create uh, test cases to play with and is, as you can see it's running uh, up in, in runtime so all the data appears inside the report portal in runtime and the same it will appear from your test affirmation when you integrate it and all your test cases will be running it will be available for you in runtime the benefit of it is like uh, if you have a long time running uh, automation and regression there is no need to wait uh, like five hours, six hours or over the night. You can see the results inside the report portal starting to appear just in a couple of seconds. And now I'm at the screen of the uh, test case. I was on that. Uh, but um, you can reach your test cases not uh, only by the names, but by the specific selection. And how the report portal provides the way to work with the fails, it marks all the failed items, all the points where you should review all the errors with to investigate flag. So basically then you open up the, your job and see, okay, well, I have nine items to investigate. You open up, review the test case, review the logs, the screenshots, uh, logs are colored. You also can add any binary data you have. Even video can be uploaded here. Uh, and uh, now uh, you also will have all details, the history of actions if somebody make changes for this particular test, test item. And now the thing which is differentiate us from the tools, you can put this uh, decision, the reason why it was actually failing. So you decide is it a product bug or system issue. And at the same time, just in one click with this line, you can access previous executions. So like check what was happening with this item in previous executions. In, in one click, there is no need to look through all the documents and so on and so forth. And uh, the different part, you can categorize, you can put the and assign the specific reason of the fail for your failed test case. And like I mentioned, what, what was the root of this uh, fail? Is it a product bug, the system issue, automation issue? And for some projects, we uh, it's sometimes it's not enough just to have those four types. And that's why you con can also have the... Uh, custom items, so like custom defect types. So right now I'm creating one more custom type, edit and uh, just go back to the test case uh, and now set it as a product bug on UI. And since all, all statistics will be updated in runtime, it will be available for all the team just in that moment and everybody will see that it, it have been changed. You also can upload and create the bug inside your bug tracking system right from this screen. And currently we support the Rally, Jira in some sort of TFS support as well. Uh, and just in one click, everything from the report portal will be uploaded into the bug tracking system. And you will see this item, like uh, this uh, ticket assigned here. You also will see the actual status. Is it open or closed already in bug tracking system? In one click, you can jump in into the um, Jira. Uh, get back, so like those traceable links you, you have back and forward. Uh, whoa, 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 it's really <laughs> quick speaking. So uh, the same you will have for loaded bugs. Not, not all the bugs should be created right from the report portal screen, but also can be just assigned, uh, existing bugs assigned for your fails. And uh, you will get the results the same like you have it for any other type. So I just like speed up uh, a little bit to represent to fill everything in, and uh, as as I show you right now, uh, since everything updated in runtime, you will see these results right here. And now comes the part of the machine learning, the analysis. As you can see here right now, we have 90 items to investigate, and what I do right now, just click analysis. And on UI, it just look like with this page, red page, that something is happening with this launch, but on the back si backend side, the report portal will review all items. And as you see, now we have just seven items left to review. So basically, report portal analyzed your fails according to the collected histor historical data of your fails. And it, that's pretty easy, and I think it's a pretty killing feature we have. Uh, well, uh, so like the same for the test case, um, la la la, and... Um, since we have, you can have a lot of data inside your one project space where will be a lot of um, 
executions, jobs, and you can also use the filters and tabs to separate the work. So like create the filter, separate it, then it's, for example, it's a mobile execution, some of them will belong to the team A executions and so on and so forth. And those filters can be saved as a separate object, which can be later used for the dashboards. This part is l really uh, loved by the managers. And the, this part ca came to the report portal right after we developed the engineering part. And what is the benefit of it? There is no need for you to m prepare something. You just create the uh, dashboards based on templates, and all these statistics inside these uh, dashboards will be updated in runtime for the managers. So all you need, just share the link to the dashboard for the manager and forget about the uh, reporting for the next decades or for the next manager. Yeah, sometimes it happens. Well, on this screen you can see how your team analyzes the result, how your fails are distributed among different reasons of the fails, how your test cases is growing from execution to execution, uh, the most failed test cases in your execution, the uh, groping around the bugs you have. Also, we will release the flaky test widget soon, uh, and many, many other different uh, widgets which will be uh, based as well on the machine learning algorithms and uh, the everything you need can be shown and represented at the report portal view. So we have the uh, like ready to go templates uh, and you can select anything so they all, all they consist of the main metrics you need in test automation. And now I'm showing that it's all configurable you even can have the full screen create your own uh, as an example and blah blah blah. But the last one, uh, but not least, uh, report portal is not only like a tool which like with a black box. It has an open API. So basically that means that using this API you can integrate it and use it whatever you want, how you want. And actually this is the point how you can make the report portal an integral part of your continuous integration, continuous delivery. Since with this API, you can request back the status for particular execution or the summary of the launches for a particular build and uh, use this uh, decision, use this answer from the report portal as an answer for your pipeline and basically how it may look like. Uh, developer commit the code. Uh, automatic deployment will be done. You will uh, have the deployment and at QA stage. The Jenkins will in, uh, execute the test automation cases. And then uh, as soon as all the results will be available in report portal, report portal will analyze it. And then with Jenkins, you can ask back, okay, what is the status for this automation? Or what is the status for this particular build? Or how many product bugs are found in this item? And if this uh, number is uh, critical, you stop the deliver. If not, you just make the pipeline go next. So that is the report portal. Do you love it? Okay, just a few uh, more slides. Once again, who is this guy? I usually do not spend the time in the beginning to say who I am and um, now you, because, you know, I can came and say a lot of bullshit and you will say, oh, okay, who is this guy? Go home. <laughs> Maybe the same like that right now, but anyway, uh, my name is uh, Dmitry Guminyuk. I'm a project manager, delivery manager and working more than 10 years in the PIME system al already and leading the development initiatives at the test competency center because report portal is not only one thing we have. Uh, but this is the most popular tool we have in open source already. Maybe I'll bring in a half of a year some more tools in open source will also describe that. Yeah, and the next, for those who liked my presentation, I have a lot of stickers here. This is my table on the night before with this manicure scissors I'm trying to <laughs> cut down. So uh, please join me here, take some, um, stickers and um, one more word. We have the open community which is growing around our tool and we have the Facebook group, the YouTube channel where we post the data, the trainings, our webinars, our meetings uh, and training materials. As well we have the Slack chat 
please join where you can speak with us, ask the question for the team, for all the development team which is um, involved with all the community we have in it. The same like Twitter, VK and GitHub. Please join, don't hesitate to give us a stars, likes on Facebook and so on. And basically that is it. The two main links you need to, uh, to remember it's the report portal.io or GitHub slash report portal. Thank you.